What's up everybody and welcome back to 3 Sided Box Prediction Center here for the NFL season. We are jumping into week 8, which is crazy and I know I say this all the time but time's flying man. Um, I'm your host David and uh, I am solo doloing it again as Michael is studying for exams but he will be here for the Eagles prediction um, as I cannot pick for it. Johnny and Eric, who knows where they are or what they're doing? Who cares? It's uh, this has become my show and my show alone, basically. Just fine. Um, with that, all the predictions for the matchups you want to see, if you're interested in, are in the description below. So you can go to the show more part, click on whatever time you want, which whatever matchup, to take you directly there, and you can hear what basically I won't have to say unless it's the Eagles, and you'll hear what Michael has to say. Uh, with that. Let's get started with Thursday Night Football. We got the Miami Dolphins heading into Baltimore to play the Ravens. Uh, interesting matchup. Uh, Dolphins kind of overachieving a little bit. doing Have a better record than people expected them to. But, you know, still basically the Dolphins. And uh, the Ravens, you know, basically having another disappointing year. Uh, some disappointing games, I should say. Um, could be doing a lot better. But with that, it's prime time, and the Ravens will be wearing those nice uniforms with the purple with the gold numbers, which I think is really sick. I'm going to pick the Ravens to win uh, this matchup. I think they, they got the edge, and they're they're going to they're, they're gonna win big. I'm predicting a big win, maybe even a shutout. Yeah. Yeah, that's what So Ravens, win, big win, and with a shutout. Let's move on to Sunday's matchups. All right, so for Sunday's first matchup, we got the Vikings heading into Cleveland to play the winless Browns. I'm going to pick the Vikings to win. They're surprising a lot of people. The injury bug has not seemed to have hit them as devastatingly as a lot of people thought it would, considering they lost basically Sam Bradford for... You know, even if he's back, Case Keenum is playing well enough where I think you keep him in at this point. Even if he's not playing great, but he's playing good enough. Dalvin Cook's injury doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. Which just shows that their offensive line is a little bit better than people give them credit for. And uh, the, they're playing the Browns in Cleveland. So, it's you're basically guaranteed to win. So, I'm picking the Vikings to win. Next game. Alrighty. Next up, we got the Falcons heading into New York to play the Jets. Little interdivisional matchups the last two. Um, I'm going to pick the Falcons to win. Because they're by far the better team. The Jets have been overachieving... Uh, even though they probably have the worst roster in the NFL. I like that they're playing with some heart and they don't want to be considered that. Uh, at least that's how I'm perceiving their season. Um, but I'm, the Falcons are just too much. Uh, even though they're having a bit of a Super Bowl hangover, um, I definitely think they're going to be more than good enough to beat the Jets. So with that, the Falcons are going to win big. Win big. Next game. All right, next up we got a divisional matchup, NFC South. We got the Panthers heading into Tampa to play the Bucks. Um, Carolina having a disappointing year again, and I think Tampa Bay is not living up to the hype. Even though there wasn't that much hype, but you know they definitely should be better, playing better than they have been this year. Um, but Cam Newton again, being the bitch that he is, you know, not handling the media properly, getting frustrated, you know, leaving halfway through his interviews and whatnot. I'm telling you, man, it's going to come back and bite you. Uh, talent only takes you so far. you got to have mental toughness in the NFL. you got to have thick skin, and you got to have class. All right? It's not often you see these, these morons uh, winning you know, big titles and, or having successful careers. Now, he is talented. Like I said, it's going to take him to a certain point before the Panthers have had enough of it. Uh, again, considering not winning games with this talented quarterback, I don't know, man. I'm not saying they're going to cut him or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, eventually things take their toll, and I think the Bucks are going to win this one, um, and I think they're going to start creeping on. They're going to have a decent uh, second half of the year starting, hopefully this week. So Bucks for me. Next game. All right, and next up for the, his one and only appearance on the show today. Excuse me. My Philadelphia Eagles are uh, hosting the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Who do, you, uh, who do you have winning that uh, in intriguing matchup? Yeah. Well, it's two evenly matched teams. Uh, yep. you got the Niners heading into Philly where they own the Eagles, clearly. They own us. Uh, clearly. You know, 
Uh, Niners having a great season. Eagles kind of falling off a little bit now. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, Carson Wentz uh, really silencing all the haters. You guys are playing really good ball. Uh, I know you guys have a lot of injuries. I th- was Fletcher Cox in last week? No. Yep. I, I was? Mm-hmm. No. I, I, know, I know your team's a little bit banged up. Still playing good. JP out for the year. Jordan Hicks out for the year. Darren Sproles out for the year. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Darren Sproles, uh, he like, uh, broke his wrist and tore his... He's still in the same play. Yeah, so I'm not. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go with the Eagles on this one. Uh, pretty, I mean, Niners just can't match up. Uh, you guys are going to... I mean, I wouldn't be well, surprised. Well, they lost all. five of their games by three points or less. <laughs> Look, they're going to have to devise a really good game plan to maybe beat you guys, but I don't see it happening. Especially, it's not it's not divisional for them, so that BS of stuff happening, you know, won't happen. So. Well, I, I, I definitely hope not, but um, I will say this, that we do tend to play down to our talent. So, you never know what's going to happen when the Philadelphia Eagles take the field. Yeah. So, uh, anything's possible. I'm obviously hoping for a big Eagles win. We're playing really well. Carson Wentz putting MVP numbers up. Uh... But we're losing a lot of key pieces to our team due to injuries, which is normal for football. But, I mean, we're really losing key players in the middle of the season. That's not a good thing. But whatever. Fly Eagles fly. Let's see what happens next game. All right. So I'm back solo again. Solo dolo. Uh, the Bears at the Saints are up next. Um, I'm going to pick the Saints to win this one. They're having a pretty solid uh, pretty solid. I mean, their their offense is is doing as good as we all thought it would, but their defense is su- playing surprisingly decent, and they're playing the Bears, who have kept games decently close since Trubisky went in. Um, but they're playing in New Orleans, and that's a that's a crazy crowd to play in front of, especially for a rookie. Um, I don't think the Bears are gonna have enough to uh, to take them, even though they won last week, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pick the Saints to win this one, and uh, continue their they're, they're pretty good start. It's weird because the Falcons are kind of having a bit of the hangover. The Bucks and Panthers are not having great years. The Saints are pretty well. Like, the division's kind of open right now. So if the Saints keep this up, they could they could make a run. <laughs> you know, like, it, anything's possible. But I think they're going to get the win this week against the Bears. Next game. Alrighty, next up we got uh, the Chargers heading to New England to play the Patriots. I don't think there's much debate. I'm picking the Patriots. Uh, the Chargers... Uh, haven't been as bad as they kind of look on paper for the most part. They've been keeping games close for the most part, but they're, they're playing the Patriots, who have been not as good as they have been normally, but what a game to get back on track for New England, in my opinion, and really start riding the ship and and steamrolling down the end of the year. So with that, Patriots for me. Next game. Next up, we got Michael's matchup. we got his Raiders heading into Buffalo to play LeSean McCoy and the Buffalo Bills. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting because the Bills are kind of bucking, they're kind of bucking a trend now where they're playing better like in the middle of the year, which is usually the, the their tipping point of like their horrible seasons over the last twenty years basically. And the Raiders are having a very off year considering the success they had last year. Um so I don't know what's gonna happen. But I'm gonna pick um I'm going to pick the Raiders to win this one because um, they're playing the Bills and uh, I want Michael's happiness to get a little bit higher so they could just drop right back down and they end up sucking again. And the Bills, I think they're going to... The division's kind of open in the in the AFC West, uh, East too because Patriots are stumbling a bit. Dolphins have a better record than people thought. The Bills have been playing well the last few weeks. The Jets are the Jets. Uh, but they have been overachieving. But... uh. This is, a, this is a tough one. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the Raiders. I'm going to stick with the Raiders. They're, they're riding a bit of momentum. They had a pretty good game. Mari Kubiak over 200 yards last week. So, on Thursday night football. So, yeah, that's Raiders for me. All right, next game. All right, next up we got the Colts heading into Cincinnati to play the Bengals. I'm going to pick the, uh, the Bengals when the Colts have been a train wreck this year. Uh, the games that you expect them to keep close, they don't. The games that you expect them to get blown out, they keep it close somehow. And it's just, it's it's been a, a, a roller coaster. And they're playing another team that's been on a crazy roller coaster too. But the Bengals have not been that great this year. Um, 
but I think they're a much steadier group of chaos than the Colts are, because the Colts are just... I don't know what they're waiting for. I would fire Chuck Pagano from now, just to set the land, and let them know what's going on, but I personally think at this point, Jim Mercer is a major problem. I mean, he has been for a while. He's, he's a... That guy has a lot of demons, a lot of issues. He's done a lot of good, but he's done some... Clearly a lot of bad lately, and... Uh, I don't know what they're waiting for. Something needs to happen with that team because they're a franchise that deserves to be good because Manning built that franchise and now Ursa and Pagano are basically shitting on it. But regardless, I'm going to pick the Bengals this week to win this one because, like I said, they're a, 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 a more solid group of chaos and shit than the Colts are. So And they're at home. So we'll see what happens with the next game. Alrighty, for the first 4 o'clock game, we got the Texans heading to Seattle to play the Seahawks. Uh, Deshaun Watson playing really well. A lot of people did not expect that uh, to come from the rookie this fast, considering that there's been a lot of uh, problems, you know, with the organization in terms of J.J. Watt getting injured and, you know, uh, Tom Savage, you know, not playing well in the first, you know, quarter that he basically was allowed to play the first game. And uh, whatever, I mean, no one expected Deshaun Watson to be this good. Let's all be honest. And the Seahawks have been one of those teams where they're playing good one week and they're playing bad the next or one quarter to a quarter. It depends. Their offense is kind of really hasn't really gelled together on a consistent basis yet. But uh, the whole thing with, with McNair and the comments he made like a big idiot. I don't understand what is wrong with this guy. Why he'd say these things. Basically, for those who don't know, he said about the, the anthem protest that the inmates don't run the prison or can't run the prison. Uh, basically saying that you know that he, the owners need to take charge of their their employees uh, or re and referencing them as inmates, but you you get what I'm saying. But I'm not gonna get into my stance on the whole thing. Uh, but I do think this will be a distraction, considering uh, DeAndre Hopkins has opted out of practicing uh, the, the day it happened, and I don't know what's happened since. So. I'm going to pick the Seahawks to win this one because they're at home. Deshaun Watson might get rattled by that crowd. And I think the distraction is going to pay. Uh, it's going to kick them right in the ass. So, Seahawks for me. Next game. And, of course, it's another 4 o'clock game. we got my division rivals. we got the Cowboys heading to Washington to put the Redskins. The Deadskins. Excuse me. Now, this one's always tough. It's always tough. Because the Cowboys... Guys, Ezekiel Elliott ran for over 200 yards against the Niners. Oh my god, the Cowboys are back. The same way when the Habs beat the Panthers, and that means they're back, but then get killed by the Kings. Oh my god. And yeah, the Redskins were just the other team in this fucking division. So I really don't know who to fucking pick. But if I had to... um. Shit, this is tough because I really don't know. I'll pick the Redskins because they're at home, honestly. Like, uh, or no, let me. I, I'm not picking the Cowboys. That's my prediction. I'm just not picking the Cowboys. Because fuck both of them. Next game. Sunday night football. Interconference matchups. We got Steelers at Lions. The Battle of the Norths. We the North. Check your fucking grammar, Toronto. You people need to. Oh my god, the dumbest saying ever, Toronto Raptors, we the North. There's no we, and there's an R in there, okay? So, f get your fucking facts straight. Anyways, um, the Lions have been having a pretty solid year overall, and the Steelers, who came back from that crazy five interception at home, Ben Roethlisberger shit show. Uh, but now they have the Martavius Bryant whole thing, where this guy... Is miserable supposedly, and he's number two to arguably one of the greatest receivers in the game right now, Antonio Brown. And basically, this guy is a scumbag because you know he he did whatever he did, got suspended for a year, and the Steelers still stuck by him, and now he wants out because he's a piece of shit. Uh, and I think that's gonna play a factor because he's probably not gonna play for the rest of the year. I think he's gonna be inactive this week for the for the most part, but I'm I'm predicting he won't play for the rest of the year, and they will not trade him. Just to prove a message that you can't let players run the organization. I'm going to pick the Lions to win because I think the, the distraction is going to be enough. And I don't think the Steelers are as good as they were the last week. I think they're they're slightly... They're better than they were in that shit show where Roethlisberger threw five picks. 
but they're closer to that than they were the when they beat the Chiefs. So I'm going to pick the Lions to win Sunday Night Football. Next game. And for the last matchup of the week, Monday Night Football Week 8, we got the Broncos heading into Kansas City to play the Chiefs again. Uh, and I say again, I just mean like they're another Monday Nighter in Kansas City. is like the third this year or something like that. Anyways. Um... Broncos offense has really been bad lately. Uh, shut out and just not producing anything. And I don't know if it's Simeon, if it's the injuries, what it is, but there's no cohesiveness with that offense. And uh, it's a little piece of dust. Um, and the Chiefs, although they've stumbled a little bit lately, they're 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 still the Chiefs. And I think Andy Reid's gonna be prepared, ready to go, and I'm predicting a Chiefs win because I think they're gonna run away the division with the in the end. Um, they lost to the Raiders last week, and they lost to uh, the Steelers two weeks ago. But, um, or whatever the order was, I can't remember. But they lost two games straight after being undefeated. And now the Eagles have the best record in football. But th that doesn't even matter, because it's so super early in the year. But the Chiefs are going to win this one. and um, But the Broncos, they're going to fix their problems a little bit. You're going to see some changes being done. And I think after this week... They're going to get the ball rolling and probably be a wild card team. So that's my predictions. Chiefs for this week. That's my predictions for this week, guys. So uh, hopefully I'll have a full cast, even though I doubt it. But Mike will probably be back because his exams will be over. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. Smash that like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't because there's more of these every week. And, uh, yeah, we're going to try and get some other stuff out there soon. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, share the video with your friends because we really appreciate the love. And put your pics on the comment below. I like to talk and see how stupid I am or how stupid other people are. And it's just funny to laugh at, with and at each other. So, that's it, guys. Enjoy the week of football to come. And we will all see you all for week nine of the NFL season. Take care, guys.